we have talked with you about time and your returning in time to how you once were when you were humans connected to Earth. We spoke with you of this situation from your perspective. We now wish to return, but speak to you from our perspective. Understand that then you were one with your planet. It was not as compressed a relationship as you have now. You were very extended, connected to all the elements, to the frequencies, to the grids, the networks, the mandalas that existed in pockets on your planet and fully encircled. You were connected to shuttle sh subtle shifts in time and resonance. You were much closer to those you call Sasquatch than you were to who you are now. They were very kind teachers to you as you took your first timid steps through the evolution process. They came here long ago to hold your hand and mentor you. If you had stayed with them, you would now be comfortable walking through time and dimensions. But because humans became arrogant, you took your hand away, said, let me do it by myself, and you went on this separate path. The Sasquatch has returned to your planet. They had not left. They are now returned to connect in your planet with you. They have reopened the veil. So many of you will find they offer theirs. When they do, we recommend you accept and we will learn many valuable lessons and have marvelous experiences. So to return to the time before, we need to discuss the elements. The first element of your planet was gas, which compressed and inflamed became fire, which came together with density. Over time, you have evolved to fire, water, air, and soil. Fire is in the core of your planet and fire is in your sky. Think of root chakra and crown chakra for these two so opposite are the same and all life is between them. Without one or the other functioning, you would have no life as you know it. All crystals come from fire. If you had no fire in your belly of earth, always craving to come outward and say hello to the elements, the sun, to greet each other face to face. If you did not have this process, you would not 
have crystals. You would not have diamonds. The crystal elements were, of course, given to you by those who wish to help you. They are excellent communication devices, but they are also a reminder that everything is born from the fire. And then you have the water. The water washes. The water helps the delicate life exist. If you did not have water, you would not have a body. You would not have the plants and the animals. The water is necessary for life and for movement through the fire. The water cools the fire and it brings active energy. The crystals are born and then the only thing that can move them is fire, lava, or plate tectonics, again created by the belly fire of Earth. This is an aggressive process. Or the delicate movement of the water in the Earth cleanses, purifies, brings life to the crystal just as it brings life to you and carries it here and there and hither and everywhere. It allows for the life to exist. And then you have the air, the oxygen, which you must breathe. Not all life needs oxygen, but the life you have does. Without the oxygen, you would have no sound. You would have no song. And what is your planet indeed but frequencies? A song. The mandalas need the oxygen and the breeze to keep them energized and to carry your song to there for hearing the birds' songs. And then what is the earth, the soil? The soil is not an original element. It is a byproduct of when the three elements work together in harmony, you have the earth. The earth is created by the fire cooled and dissolved by the water by the air creating bacterias and areas, by the trees and the plants growing and dying, by the animals dying and decaying. Earth is the sum of all life on your planet, ever growing, ever changing, giving a beautiful deep resonance. Each of these elements, when combined with other elements, becomes the subtle shade of intriguing excitement. The clouds blowing by, rivers, the rocks going through the mountains, horses riding across plains, giraffes reaching their necks to eat leaves, you see these as how you see them. We see them as elements and evolution and networks of energy. So long ago, networks, mandalas, appeared on your planet. They were built by the life that existed here. These networks never 
die, they may become ill repaired, they may crumble, but they go to sleep, they do not die. Every mandala that was ever come to birth on your planet came from the song of your planet. And if they are not active now, they are resting. The mandalas of the ancient gods, of the animals that evolved and died. So we take you first to time when humans were young and you lived in connection, harmony with your mandalas. And through your mandalas, you could travel the stars, walk the dimensions with Sasquatch guiding you. It was an enlightened time before you became civilized. You were greatly enlightened. All of this is waking up again. So you may go forward again just by connecting to these networks that are waking up and calling to you. All you need to do is invite the song into your being and then sing your way through the galaxies. Now, briefly, we take you to an older mandala, a time when the dinosaurs reigned supreme. Unlike your current evolution existence, they were evolving purposefully as one global race of beings, be it plant, animal, it did not matter. Not all were bright. Not all were stupid. They were as diverse as you are now. There were some beings that were brilliant. We tell you this. There were levels of civilization in existence you could not even comprehend were we to explain a long enough explanation but be diverse we must return so they chose for all to evolve together always connected in a soul contract around your globe all the mandalas were maintained and fed each other there was not this mandala here this one here this one here connecting that one there it was harmony of many mandalas as one. This was potent magic. The guides, as you have your angels, of course the dinosaurs had their equivalent, the ones you now call the crass name of reptilian, which of course is not their proper name. It is a um, human disrespectful slang word but the one you call uh, they were here guiding and mentoring they were song masters always singing and helping and evolving they were beautiful stitching mandalas encouraging growth bringing elements together, speaking with one kind of dinosaur, saying, why don't you go over here so you can flourish? Oh, it was truly, truly an enlightened, beautiful time. And then the disaster struck. So what do you do when you are a guardian and those you guardian over Nine-tenths of them are dead. 
you either pack up and go away or you stay and you say, I'm going to see if I can help. This is a disaster, but not total destruction. I'll see if I can help. But of course, it did not work so well for those who stayed. They were in a war zone, trying desperately to help those who were in pain and suffering and confused and disconnected. If you exist all your time connected to these great mandalas and suddenly they are cut off from you, it was a dark time for all. And the guides, the guardians, were in such distress. And soon they became cut off from theirs. If you are a light being who has always been in one with your collective, and now you are cut off, you are only connected with those who are with you, and you are all in trauma. What do you think will happen to them? We had to record their stories. It was so sad. It was so sad. They were in such pain. It was death of a soul. So, it was a dark time for everyone. There was such great distress. You cannot have a dark cancer appear here and have it not affect everywhere. Earth had to be scissored off so that the rest of existence could survive. We were shut off and those who were there were left with watchers but no one would intervene. Poor guardians, the poor life, that so short ago was the song of our hearts. So those you call the evil corrupt reptilians we see as such pain and sorrow damaged. Such anger that they were not the guardians for the humans for their, they could not, they were damaged. Their songs lay forgotten. As you rose up saying, look at us, we're so fabulous. Their anger festered. And you see now the outcome always, they are angry, they are angry, they thwart at you. They see themselves as the poor starving people forced outside in the cold and the rain while you are inside having your happy little party. So yes, they throw rocks at the windows, they infiltrate, they do everything they can to take you down. But here is within each of you a lesson on how to heal for everyone. We tell you these guardians are disconnected from their beautiful race 
if they become reconnected, they again return to their natural state. But they feel ugly, they feel rejected, they forget who they were, and they do not understand. When you connect with your many individual mandalas, we encourage you to meditate, return back in time to explore the previous mandalas that are lying dormant. See if you can raise them up from their slumber because they will help to power up magnify, expand, enhance the grids, the networks around your planet at this time. And this will awaken the songs, the notes that are familiar to these beings. They will, oh, what, what, what's this? What's this? What's this? And it will be a pleasant experience for them to go, oh, I have This is how they speak when they are making noises. They do not have words like you. This is how they speak. But eventually they return to their and they become one with your beautiful grids. All their darkness falls from them and their family can reach out and connect. Then imagine humans will have two guardians, your angels and the dinosaur guardians are again called in to help all life rise up as one. This will be a amazing and the Sasquatch will hold your hand and help you. This is what we see, what we hope can happen. Do not fear the dark guardians. Do not fear the darkness. Or when you sing your song of creation, they sing only sour notes. When you sing your song of love, they sing only pain and destruction. But the love will always overpower. You do not need to connect with them. You just need to send out your song through meditation, through love, through good energy flowing through you, through kindness for all. As you wonder always, how can I be kind? How can I send love out? You become very pure in you. You do not even need to engage with anyone. Just always become more evolved within you and you will find your light will shine brighter and brighter. And as you are singing the song of love and they're singing the song of discord, you have your song. There's a but eventually they keep hearing they go and they rise up and are absorbed into your grid so we encourage you where you feel hate say Either I do not need to connect, or I can just send love. My love may not affect them, but when enough send love, an effect will eventually occur.
we are wearying our conduit. This has been an emotional, as we say, sharing from you to you from our perspective has been an emotional experience for us. And we thank you for, for creating space that allows this to happen. We thank you. And we remind you, while you are always in your perspective, life happens more interestingly when you also see life from other perspectives with empathy while always keeping yourself flowing with love and integrity. Oh my God.